Hi folks, Chocolate Yoda here, spelled Y-O-D-D-A-H, because film studios are litigious. Now, I can't believe what I'm about to talk about. We all know Dump is an outrageous liar. I mean, he's told the most ridiculous lies. He's probably told the most lies of any one person I've ever heard. And he lies about pretty much everything, but this last lie that he told, I still can't believe he did it. You know, part of the art of lying is that when you tell a lie, it needs to be something that is hard to verify. It it needs to be something that is difficult to prove a lie. You know, leave people wondering, leave people scratching their heads. But this lie was so obvious and so naked that it was exposed immediately. And I'm not going to get into the names of the people involved because I think their family's been through enough. But a young woman was shot and killed. And at a campaign rally, Dump basically took information that was in the New York Post article about this young woman and recited it into a mic live when he knew he was being recorded in public at one of his rallies and added that he had spoken to the family about this young woman. And of course, the spokesperson for the family the victim's sister went on television to say that was a lie. Now, she didn't use the word lie. She used the word misinformation, but I'm guessing someone coached her on legal reasons for that. But he lied. He said he spoke to the family. The family said, no, he didn't. And I just find this sickening. I find it unbelievable. I, I, I just, I can't wrap my head around what his motivation would be. And frankly, I think it's just another sign that he's unraveling. The pressure of all of his trials and financial woes and prospects of jail and Everything that's going on, all of his associates that are coming out against him, all of the people that he endorses losing, I mean, everything is just collapsing. And he's clearly feeling it. I had observed something the other day while I was talking to someone. You know, most of the time when you see photos of presidents, you see them when they first get elected, and then if you see a photo of them four years later, it looks like they age 20 years. And of course, it's not hard to imagine why. It's got to be the most outrageous job in the world. Are there more dangerous jobs? Of course there are. But as far as emotionally demanding, there are probably a few that come close, but I, I just can't imagine having the fate of the free world on your conscience day in and day out for four years, what that would do. And we don't really have to imagine it. We can see photos of, of everybody else that had been in the White House for at least four years and how it drastically aged them. Not Dump. He looked exactly the same four years later. But in the four years, or almost four years that have followed, man, it looks like he aged 30 years. He looks terrible. And I think he looks that way because he's panicking. I think no matter how much he puts on that fake, very practiced smile of a man who's been in the public eye for at least four decades, actually longer than that. It's probably been over five decades. This guy's been wealthy and famous for a very long time. He knows 
how to do the public thing. He knows how to smile. He knows how to charm. And so sometimes he looks like he's okay, but most of the time he looks absolutely beaten and torn asunder. Sorry to use a a biblical phrase there, but he really does. It, It just looks like time has ravaged him since he was booted out of the White House. And I really think, I, I, I know, I, 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 I'm not a gambler, but I would bet money that he is in a pretty much full-on panic almost all the time. He's got to feel the walls closing in. I know he's an extraordinarily stupid man, but I think he's smart enough to know that the walls are closing in on him. They just are. He knows his time is up. He knows he's probably not going to be a free man very much longer. And at the very least, he knows that he's going to be convicted of a crime. And he knows that once that happens, it's going to be a precipitous fall from grace and all the way to the bottom. And while I'm glad that's happening, I'm still shocked that in the midst of his fall, he could still summon the strength to tell such a disgusting lie about a murdered teenager and her family. Like, man, that is a depth of depravity that I just did not see coming. But it is what it is. That's what we're dealing with. That's the kind of human being, or really subhuman, that we're dealing with. So I just wanted to share that with you. That's all for now. Peace, love, and granola. Talk to you soon. (laughs) 